Hey guys, so today we are going to see how we can create custom clothing for GT5 using Blender and Solemns. But before starting the video, just make sure that you are aware with the basics of Blender and 3D modding so that you don't have any issues while following this video. So heading over to our Blender, I am using Blender 3.4.1 and latest Solemns version for this tutorial. And over here I have got a custom t-shirt which we will be putting in game. So since it's a female t-shirt, I'm just going to open up Codewalker first, open up the RPF Explorer and then we need to search for mpfpremode-01.yft. In case you are making uh, some clothing for let's say males, so what you want to do is replace this F over here with M. And if you just search that, we have our YFT file over here, we'll just right click and export as XML, we'll just save it in my tutorial t-shirt folder. Then what we want to do is find a piece of clothing from in-game which represents somewhat of our custom clothing. So we can do that by going to a website called tobi.space. And then over here, what we can do is disable mail. And under the groups, we want a JBib. So the t-shirts and hoodies etc are under JBib. And let's say you're making a chain, then you want to enable Tief. Since GT uses Tief for all the ties and chains and stuff. So for our tutorial, we're going to enable JBib. And then we're going to find some clothing which is similar to a custom clothing. So let's find something. And this one over here looks similar. So what we can do is just copy this name. Just don't copy the group name. Copy the name and in YF, uh, and in RPF Explorer, just search for it. Open up the folder and now we want to search for the group. So it's jbib002. Over here we have our jbib002. So what we can do is right click, export XML and then we can go back to our blender. Now we can just open up our Solemns tools, import code worker XML. We select the YDD, check mark the import external skeleton button. And now we have our GT clothing. So now what you want to do is disable the low LOD, disable the medium LOD and we only have our high LOD. And just make sure that under the vertex groups, if you have names like unknown.001, 002 etc, then you have imported the clothing incorrectly. You need to have proper vertex names over here so that you don't have any issues while weight transferring or exporting. And now what we can do is match our custom clothing to our GT clothing. Since I've already done that, I'm not going to modify my clothing, but you can definitely customize and resize, reshape or whatever to match your clothing with custom clothing. And another thing which you can do is you can search for free mode components. So let's say we'll just search for free mode YFT again, MPF free mode underscore 01.yft. And then what we can do is right click, go to file location under the free mode. What we can do is export some of these components. So let's say we can export our lower component. So we can let's say export our lower triple zero component. Export as XML. And then we import our lower component as well. Import external skeleton. And we import it. So now what we can do is make sure that our custom piece of clothing aligns with pet's other components. So this helps you to maintain a proper shape of your clothing for the whole body. I'm not going to do that since I have already resized our clothing. So I'm just going to undo that. But once let's say you have completed your clothing, what we can now do is weight transferring. So in order to weight transfer on a custom mesh, first of all make sure that you don't have any vertex groups pre-assigned. In case you have any vertex groups, so what we can do is let's say we have this vertex group pre-assigned, select it and remove it. So remove all the vertex groups first, then select your GTM mesh, shift click your custom mesh, go to weight paint mode and then go to weights and transfer weights. 
under the transformation data panel, we need to change the source layer selection from active layer to by name. Like that, we can have all the names transferred over from our GTA mesh to a custom mesh. Then we can just change back to object mode, select a custom piece of clothing, hide our high LOD and change back to our weight paint. And now if we just select uh, any of the vertex groups and now we have weights on a custom piece of clothing. Obviously it's not perfect, but now you can weight paint manually so that it's a bit easier instead of weight painting it from the scratch. So now what we can do is weights, smooth it out a little bit. I'm going to set the iterations to two. And if you just check back again, it's a lot more better. So in order to test your mesh that it's compatible and does not have any incorrect vertex group signed, what you can do is select your mesh, go to modifiers, add modifier and select armature. Select your armature and then in the viewport select your armature, change from object mode to pose mode. Then what we can do is select any of the bones and try to rotate it. So our mesh deforms along with our skeleton. Let's try this arm. It works fine. But as you can see over here, under the arm, we have a little bit of incorrect deformation. So we can fix that by weight painting. So let's change back to object mode, select our mesh, change back to weight paint. And now in the vertex group, we can fix our weight. So left arm roll. I'm just going to remove the weight from over here in this region. And if you're not aware with the weight painting concepts, then you should learn Blender first before following this video. And now if we just check back our mesh again in pose mode. And now it looks fine. It's not perfect obviously, but it's fine for our test. So let's change back to object mode. Now what we want to do is vertex paint our custom mesh. So in order to vertex paint our custom mesh, first we go to our object data properties panel. Go to color attributes, change our first color to color 0 and make sure the spelling is correct and then we can create another color attribute and name it to color 1. Set the domain to face corner and data type to byte color and set the color to black. Now what we want to do is understand how each color attribute corresponds to our mesh in game. So the color 0 attribute is the normal vertex color as we define for all of our GT objects. So we can just change back to vertex paint and for our vertex paint we can just set it to orange. I'm going to paint my vertex color 0 as orange but I'll put the link of an image down in the description which you can refer which has a list of different vertex colors and how they correspond in game. So we just set it to orange and then we can paint our mesh. Make sure that your color attribute layer is set to color 0 and then we can paint the mesh. And if you want to see the vertex colors, we can change back to viewport shading and then we can set our color to attributes. And then we can just paint our mesh. I'm going to increase the radius. And now what we want to do is paint our color one attribute. So color one attribute contains two types of properties. The color one attribute color property corresponds to wind effect in game so if you paint the color one vertex all black it will not correspond to wind at all but if you paint the vertex white for color one then the clothing will correspond to the wind in game so if you don't want to have let's say a wind effect your clothing you want to paint your color one to all black then we want to paint our color one alpha to black too color one alpha corresponds to wetness or sweat in game for your clothing so we want to paint that black too. If you paint the alpha to white, you will have wet spots on your clothing. So what we can do is now paint our alpha. Painting alpha is a little bit difficult in Blender because the viewport shading doesn't show the vertex alpha. So what you can do instead is go to shading tab, add a new node, which is color attribute. Then we can select our attribute as color one connect the alpha layer to the base color. 
and then what we can do is alpha painter mesh so in order to do that first make sure that your active layer is set to color one and then we can change our brush to mix to erase alpha or add alpha but instead we can also use solemn tools so if we go to solemn tool general tools vertex paint terrain paint and then over here we have our paint option and if you set alpha to minus one and then select paint alpha you can change the brush to terrain brush and then we can erase alpha so let's paint it all black once you have painted your alpha i'm going to set the alpha to one paint alpha let's say we paint the back of this as white so we can notice the sweat effect on the t-shirt now what we can do is connect back our base color and now we can change back to our viewport shading now once we have painted our color attributes both color 0 and color 1 we are ready to create a drawable so let's create a drawable for a mesh go to drawable tools create drawable select your mesh and click create drawable now your mesh is hidden because we have disabled our high LODs so let's disable that and over here as we can see we have our geometry so we can first rename it to t-shirt ILOD next what we want to do is create multiple LODs for our mesh so in order to do that so I'm going to duplicate it two times rename this one to t-shirt low LOD and this one to t-shirt mid LOD and now what we can do is hide our high LOD enable our medium LOD and now what we can just do is simply decimate our mesh and I'm just going to decimate a little bit and this much looks fine I'm just going to apply the modifier over here then I'm going to hide our middle LOD for now enable our low LOD mesh and then we are going to add another decimate modifier and I'm just going to make it super low poly so this should do apply the modifier and now what we can do is enable a medium LOD press period on our numpad enable our medium LOD select the mesh shift drag it to drawable model delete the original mesh disable the medium LOD enable low LOD this is the drawable model for low LOD enable our custom low LOD select the mesh shift drag it to drawable model and delete our original mesh disable low LOD and enable high LOD now we can just drag and drop it to drawable model over here and this is the leftover drawable so we can just delete the hierarchy next we can delete the original mesh and now a custom clothing is almost ready so now what we want to do is give a proper shader to our custom mesh so before giving it a proper shader we want to rename our textures in a proper way because GT follows a very specific pattern of naming its textures and models so if we just go to this folder over here I have my first diffuse texture which is currently applied to my mesh I have a second diffuse texture which we'll be going to add as an alternative so players can switch between two different textures then I have my normal map and then a specular map so in order to get reference on how GT names its textures we can open up our RPF Explorer and if we now look at our JBIB over here we can see and over here we have our first JBIB and corresponding to it is the first texture over here so it's named as JBIB diff underscore triple zero A uni so A stands for the first variation of the texture and the texture variation can grow from A to Z so you can have total of 26 variations of your base texture so as you can see for our first variation we're just gonna copy this name name of first diffuse texture to jbibdiff000a uni and for our second diffuse texture 
we're going to change this a to b then for a normal map we can see over here we have jbib normal and then the number so we can just change it to jbib underscore normal and since this is our first clothing which we'll be going to add in our custom imt so we'll just name it as triple zero then for our specular map we're going to name it as jbib underscore spec underscore triple zero and now we have our proper texture names for our diffuse normal and specular map so now what we can do is go to our drawable tools under the shaders panel we can search for pet shader so we are just going to use the pet shader so i'm going to select my first material and then i'm going to click convert to selected you'll see that the textures will be very dull but don't worry it will be fine in game so we can just go to shading tab over here select our material and we want to change our material name once again because we have changed our textures name we'll just go to the folder and change the specular.dds to jbibspec000.dds change our diffuse texture to diffuse a and change our normal texture to jbib normal now what we want to do is go to solms panel under the textures panel we want to embed our normal and embed our spec sampler then we can change the usage from diffuse to specular for spec sampler and we're going to be using dxt1 format for our specular change the usage type from diffuse to normal and we're going to use dxt1 for this too then we don't need to embed the diffuse texture since it's going to be in a separate ytd file and for my texture it's going to be a dxt1 format because it does not have any alpha but in case you have any alpha properties for a texture you need to use dxt5 format and now what we can do is replace this material for all the other lod's in our model so we can just go to view disable our high lod enable medium lod select our mesh and change this material to material ped hide our medium lod select our low lod change the material to material ped and now what we can do is enable all the LODs for our model. And now what we can do is rename our object to let's say jbib underscore custom. And then we also want to rename our skeleton over here. So let's say jbib underscore custom underscore triple zero. Then select the topmost hierarchy export code worker XML. And if we just export with selected objects on. We have exported our XML over here. And as you can see, we have our JBIP custom YDD. And over here, we have our JBIP custom triple zero. So first of all, we want to rename our YDD. And in order to do that, we want to follow a pattern. And for that, we want to create a custom YMT for our YDDs. So in order to do that, we can just download the YMT editor over here. I'll put the link down in the description. So you want to open the link, go to the release and download the latest release over here. So once we have downloaded the YMT editor, we can just open the YMT editor and then we can go to files, new. And since we are working with females, we'll just select free mode female. And now we want to input any custom name for our YMT. So let's say tutorial DLC. Click on submit and then we want to add components for our YDD. So we are working with the JBIB over here. So we can go to components and enable JBIB. And then we have our component over here, expand it. And we already have our single component over here. Under the texture, we are going to add another texture over here. So expand view texture, click on plus one texture. And now we have two textures for our YDD. And then as you can see, we have our triple zero name over here. And that's what corresponds to our YDD. So what we can do is file, save IMT, and I'm just going to save it in my tutorial folder over here. Okay. And now if we check our YMT, 
we want to copy the name of the YMT and then we want to rename our YDD. So just change the JBIP custom to the YMT. We name JBIP underscore triple zero underscore U. And now we want to copy the name. So copy the full name and leave the YDD. And for our textures folder, we're going to paste the name over here. And then we can just select our YDD, which is this. Go to Code Walker. I'm just going to enable the edit mode and create a new folder. I'm going to name it Tutorial. And I'm just going to drag and drop the YDD over here. And as you can see, we have our YDD. If we just open it, you can see that everything works fine. Now we can create a new YDD. In order to do that, first we can do is create right click new and create a YDD file. Paste the name and then we need to copy our texture name over here. So for our first diffuse texture, we just copy the name, remove the JB part and paste it over here. So it's going to be our YMT file name and then jbib diffuse triple zero a uni click on ok so let's create another ytd for our second texture so what we can do is just copy the name new ytd file paste the name change the name from a to b because we have our second texture named over here as b press on ok then we can add textures to it so add add the first texture and make sure it's named correctly open and save Open our second YTD, add, second texture, open and save. Then we can just export all these three files into our server. So I've already set up a resource folder over here. Over here we have our FX manifest and stream folder. In the FX manifest is just a plain manifest if we just open it with VS code. As you can see it's just the FX version and game. And in the stream folder, we can just drag and drop all these three files over here. Then we can copy our YMT from over here in our stream folder to this. And then what we want to do is add proper entries for all these three files in our FX manifest. For that, we are going to follow this post over here. And if we just scroll down, I'll put the link of this post down in the description. We just want to copy this code, go to VS code, add a new file, paste it and then if you follow the tutorial, uh, we need to change the pet name. So for females, we have MPF free mode, so that is fine. If you have a male, we'll just change the F to M. So for a DLC, we named our YMT as tutorial DLC. We just copy that, paste it in the DLC name. And for full DLC, as you can see, we need our full YMT name. So just copy the full YMT name, paste it right over here. Then for the E character, as you can see, for female pets, we need to put this. And for male pets, we need to put this. So we are using female pet. We just copy and paste this over here. For our creature metadata, we don't have this right now. So we'll just leave it at default. And then now we can just save the file as our YMT name dot meta. What we can do is just copy our YMT name, save, change the format to all YMT name dot meta. And if we look at our resource folder, we have our meta over here. Now we want to add this file entry to our FX manifest. So we just copy that, paste this, change this name to our YMT name which is this paste and paste save the FX manifest and now we are ready to stream our clothing so let's just start a server start our 5m ensure our resource and let's hop in in the game so while our server is loading, here are a few important points which we need to remember when working with drawables and clothings. Each bed has its set number of limits of custom YMTs. So let's say you are on the latest game version of your server. So let's assume you have limit of 4 custom YMTs and on the next game update, that limit of custom YMT will be decreased by 1. 
So you need to adjust the number of clothing which you have in your server and limit the number of custom IMTs. So let's say you want to add another JBib, you do not need to create a new custom IMT. You just click on add new drawable and then the number changes to 001. So you rename your YDD and all its textures to 001. And let's say you want to add another component, you go to components. Let's say we add teeth, we go to teeth and we have a triple zero, the first component. So you can copy the name of the YDD and the textures from the game to make sure that your textures and YDDs are named properly. It is very important that you name your YDD and your textures properly, otherwise the game might not work properly. So now we are in game and if we just change our player to female and then if we just change our skin it will be under shirts and as you can see we have our clothing if we just try to run and move it works fine as you can see at the back we have some sweaty area which you painted as white alpha so yeah, if you paint the alpha as white, you will have some wetness effect. And now if you just try to make it a little bit beautiful, what we can do is find some suitable component which fits a fed. As you can see, there's a little bit of clipping, but we can fix that. It's not that big of an issue and uh, shirt just change it to zero yeah now everything seems to work fine now what we can do is also change our t-shirt texture because we added two diffuse textures so here's the second one and this also works fine and now the sweaty spot is a lot more visible now so yeah, like that, we can add clothing to our GT5 using blend and solemns. And in case you have any trouble, I'll put the link down in the description of solemns discord. You can join there and ask your doubts and queries, but make sure obviously that you are aware with the basics of blender and GT5 modding. So you don't have any stupid questions to ask over there. So that's it for this video. If you like what I do over here, you can support me by donating on my coffee link down in the description. And I'll see you next time.